welcome on behalf of uh, the government of Kenya and the people of Kenya I want to welcome all of you to this um, third RCMRD International Conference and the fourth Afrigeo Symposium here in Nairobi and while you are in Nairobi if you sang along with us the Africa National, the Africa Anthem, there was a section that said that this is the cradle of humanity. And specifically, that particular paragraph was talking about Kenya. So, to all of you who've come from other continents. Let me say on behalf of humanity, welcome home. <laughs> this is uh, where we all began from, and therefore, you're welcome home. I also want to say that I am very happy this morning because aside from my public duty, I am also a very proud scientist, and I'm happy to be amongst friends. Development leadership in our time is monumentally challenging work that is severely constrained from two quarters. First, constraint relates to the agency with which we must optimally deploy existing resources to staff of ever mounting demands and shortages. Related to this are not just the questions of increasing numbers of people, but also the conditions of poverty, inequality, and unemployment that stock them. The second constraint relates to the fact that often policy is generated using the best available data, which sometimes falls short of the accuracy needed for efficient planning. This means that ordinarily, planning used imperfect data and public policy left room for improvement. In turn, much needed opportunities, resources, and policies are not optimized, lending us to fall short time and time again. We are also challenged by the very real danger that human activity is overwhelming the Earth's resilience and ecological balance. In our quest to maximize available resources, we have overlooked the fact that a degraded environment is immensely dangerous for all of us. And this notwithstanding that we are still desperately vulnerable to natural disasters owing to poverty, inequality, underdevelopment of resilience, and relevant knowledge. There is, in other words, widespread powerlessness in terms of our relationship with the earth and its resources on one hand and the environment on the other. What developmental decision making requires as a matter of urgency is the capability at the highest level to infuse the idea of sustainability into that of development in a manner that rewards society with prosperity, resilience, and intergenerational equity. We want to be able to harness our resources, optimize our efficiency, and trigger a virtuous circle of sustainable prosperity for generations. In the short term, we want to be emancipated from vulnerability to natural disaster environmental adversity, and an attendant climatic intricacies that frequently lay waste the achievements and the hopes of nations and peoples. This is especially true for our moment in Kenya as we approach the penultimate medium-term plan of Vision 2030 and are catalyzing its attainment through the module of cross-cutting enablers of the President's Big Four plan. Our tremendous investment in the preconditions for the mass socioeconomic uplift of our people 
must be ensured by greater accuracy and efficiency, deeper knowledge, and predictive capacity, and ev evidence-based decision making. Whatever contribution you can make towards the achievement of these four priority policy areas, you ought to do it proudly for your country, for your continent, and for your people. Providing solutions in any of these developmental agenda items is our duty. It is my hope that you will rise to the challenge this week. The most impactful solutions to our greater or to our greatest challenges are in this room. Earth observation and resource mapping are empirical scientific fields that improve the accuracy of planning and development planning by a tremendous magnitude. I'm excited to see the participants in this regional center has built with US government agencies, USAID and NASA, the EU and European Space Agency, and others to support creation of geospatial tools for value addition in decision-making processes. The government of Kenya has fully embraced digital data to help this country fast track achievements in various fields. We have just undertaken an elaborate registration program for all Kenyans, and we will soon commence in the next month a census exercise carefully guided by special data technology. Further, I believe that satellite data and GIS systems are helping us design better housing facilities for Kenyans through improved spatial plans that contribute to the county integrated development plans. I am pleased to learn that through applications developed at this regional center in collaboration with partners, we can now monitor crop conditions from planting to harvesting and thus help the country manage food security. I challenge you to seek solutions to the problems of food distribution and market systems in the region to not only foster efficient trade, but also ensure that people are not going hungry in one region while there is surplus in another region. We are proud to host the third international conference of the Regional Center for Mapping of Resources for Development as well as the fourth Geo Africa Geo Symposium. As already indicated, dwindling natural resources coupled with climate change have contributed to ecological fragility that intensifies year on year. There is a strong movement urging greater focus on the anthropogenic dimension of climate change. A consequence of this depletion and stress is that many populations are experiencing or are prone to unprecedented vulnerability in terms of personal, economic, and other forms of insecurity. Government is challenging at best at these times. And under conditions of mass, mass precarity, the challenges can be overwhelming. The theme of this event suggests that the way out of this disastrous turn lies in earth observations for evidence-based decision making. In other words, we are able in this forum to demonstrate the potential of digital data, analytics, and special information in efficiently addressing challenges from pollution mitiga mitigation, disaster preparedness, drought and famine, insecurity and conflict. I personally have experience in the power of geospatial information and data from Earth observations in generating accurate knowledge that can support sound planning and effective action. My PhD work drew on Asta and Landsat data to show the extent of the impact of land use on the Saiwa Swamp Sanctuary and we were able to identify and measure relevant variables with an accuracy that is simply empowering. With our rising population intensifying 
urbanization and industrialization, we are going to be an even more water stressed society, all things being constant. Pollution, drought, and conflict will result if scarce water resources are not managed efficiently. But earth observation holds the key to proper resource mapping and planning, moving us from a position of acute powerlessness to one of tremendous empowerment. I therefore urge you to collaborate with government and public institutions in producing accurate data that can guide the development of effective solutions to problems besetting agriculture and land use. Wildlife management, transportation and urbanization, pastoral and, what and other water resources, housing and resource exploitation, among others. I also encourage you to strengthen linkages with our research and higher education institutions, not only to empower them, but also to elevate and broaden our national capacity in this very critical field. At a personal level, I am a strong supporter of your work, and I assure you of the Kenya government's commitment to the agenda of earth observations for evidence-based decision-making. This is why we are proud to host this regional center, Africa Geo, right here in Nairobi. And before I make my last statement, maybe it's just good for me to say two things. Number one is to say that um, society is moving to information or knowledge based technology driven development. And as policymakers, the best policy interventions can be achieved if you have the most accurate information to work with. And the most accurate information is information that is researched, information that is backed by knowledge and evidence so that we avoid guesswork and trial and error and myths. And part of wrong diagnosis and sometimes wrong interventions is not because the policymakers are stupid. It's because they are working with information that is either outdated or that is not researched and that does not have evidence behind it. And therefore, it is my position that the way into the future, how policymakers like myself will make decisions that would change our society and move us to another level and create interventions that manage our challenges and uh, creates a better society, will be informed to a great extent by the quality of information that we have from our researchers and from institutions and organizations like this one. And therefore, you occupy a very central position in the quality of decisions and interventions and policy decisions that policymakers will make if we get the correct, up-to-date, accurate information to work with. And I'm saying this from a position of uh, experience. When we were working on drought, and I'm happy uh, USAID have, have said this, when we were working on how to manage loss of livestock, because in my other life I was a minister for agriculture, and we thought long and hard, how do we provide an insurance scheme for uh, parcelists. And it is when we got geospatial information on how do we trigger payments of insurance 
to our pastoralists? At what point? So that we don't make it subjective. We have accurate, up-to-date information on when we can declare drought and when we can declare it's time to intervene. GIS, geospatial information came in very handy. And last year, for example, we intervened in five counties using this technology and working with development partners. And we managed to reach many pastoralists who would otherwise have lost their livestock with no recourse. And therefore, that information is uh, critical for decision makers like myself and others in governments to be able to make the right decisions at the right time in a way that is not subjective, but in a manner that is objective and driven by accurate information. We have just signed the Africa Continental Free Trade Area, AFTA. And we need a lot of information to make the subsequent decisions because our contribution to trade worldwide from a continent that a fifth of the population lives in is only 3%. And part of the decisions that we need to make going into the future is how do we contribute more? What interventions do we need to make? Because sometimes if you're using information that is not accurate, you make the wrong interventions. You take the wrong policy decisions and you end up in the wrong places often. And therefore, how do we, uh, and this is something for the scientists here and uh, the other people, how do we increase our productivity in this continent? How do we raise and how do we invest in the huge agricultural potential that we have in this continent? How do we reverse the food imports that comes into this continent by producing more? We need the benefit of science we need the benefit of research to know in which areas, what crops, uh, what kind of investments are required so that we can not only reverse the food imports that come into this continent and uh, begin to export, but also what becomes our contribution to world trade. So these are real time decisions that we have to make. And science and uh, scientists like yourselves need to help us to make uh, these decisions so that we do not lose time and we do not make the wrong decisions and so, so that we, we end up with the correct prescriptions of solutions for what we must, what we must do. And, um, and, and so that's really my, my request to, to this institution. I have had a small intervention with the Director General and knowing very well the value and the quality of the training that goes on in the training institute as part of this institution, I've undertaken to him that uh, we will find as government of Kenya what interventions we can make to make sure that the students who are here have access to grants and bursaries so that we can expand the numbers that are generated.
and we can create more human capital that can help us um, make the correct decisions and provide interventions that would give us the right uh, policy decisions. Uh, I've also agreed with him that we will find a mechanism and our public-private uh, partnership program to see whether we can uh, work together to provide housing and hostels so that students from other countries can also find admission in the college that is here. I am told uh, at the moment it's mostly Kenyan students and this being a regional center for 20 countries, we do not want to be selfish and make it a Kenyan institution. We want to share it with the rest of this uh, great continent. It's now my pleasure to declare the third RCMRD International Conference and the fourth Africa Geo Symposium officially open. I wish you um, great deliberations and great outcomes. May the very good Lord bless you. Thank you.